Ordinarily, I'd probably try to avoid a topic like this, especially since after last year. You guys know that I've publicly apologized many times for uh, speculating on personal matters within NASCAR, and I try not to do that anymore. And I'm going to try to get through this video without doing any of that, because that's not what this video needs to be. But I will just address this up front before we get into the details of this. Domestic violence is something that I don't condone. It's something that's a very serious issue to me back when I was um, probably about late middle school. Um, my mom at the time survived domestic abuse from a man who was not my father, as a former stepfather. And she endured that for many years. I unfortunately had to see it. I was not strong enough to stop it. Um, he, the man never harmed me. He definitely, um, tried to get in my way of helping my mom at times, but he never did harm me. If he did, I think my mom would have done some serious harm to him. Um, but this is a very serious issue. And this week we've seen two instances in the NASCAR world where that has been caught and it has been, uh, punished by NASCAR. So earlier this week, we saw Cody Ware and definitely suspended from his NASCAR driving abilities. Uh, he was removed from the car for this past weekend's race at Bristol Motor Speedway. And immediately, um, those of us knew something wasn't entirely right with this when they took the name off the car. You know, here in the past, when we've seen injuries to Kurt Busch, injuries to Alex Bowman, injuries to Chase Elliott, their names have not been removed at the car. The team of Rick Ware Racing removed Cody Ware's name off the number 51 car this weekend, and Matt Crafton's name was put on top of it. This weekend, when Zane Smith drives the car, I would assume Zane Smith's name would be on the car. So Cody Ware was arrested on Monday, uh, last Monday, two weeks ago, I guess it would be, and he was arrested for assault on a female and assault by strangulation, and he was held in jail at a $3,000 bond. He was brought out of that uh, jail. He got his bond paid and he got out and now he is awaiting a court trial date initial court trial date of around the beginning of may i don't remember the day maybe may 1st but beginning of may is when he's supposed to go to court for that so cody ware indefinitely suspended by nascar i would assume it's going to be a long time before nascar welcomes him back in and you know he needs to go get everything situated with his life get that took care of in order i mean as a person who has known Cody for a little while, even before I started doing YouTube, it hurt to find out that he did this, especially, you know, me telling you guys a bit of my, more of my background. And because it's like you think that you know a guy a little bit better and then you hear this and it hurts. To, it hurts to hear that as a NASCAR fan, as a you know supporter of him, it hurts to hear that. And what's even more bad is that it's not the only example we saw in the NASCAR world this week. We saw a crew member for Alpha Prime Racing suspended indefinitely this week by NASCAR as well, Mr. Michael Hayden. Now, Michael Hayden has a little bit more information out there. And again, we're not going to speculate on this. We're not going to take sides in any of this. But I'm just going to present the facts of what I've been able to find. Not many people have been talking about this issue, but here's what I have so far. So when I heard about this story with Michael Hayden, um, really the, the only things that were being reported was Jayski had put out a article. Um, it was put out yesterday. And in that article, it just simply said, crew member Michael Hayden has been indefinitely suspended for violating sections 2.14.A and 4.4.D 4 .4 and 4 .4 of the NASCAR rule book. And what is those exact violations? Well, I was able to go into it and look it up a little bit. Now, 2.14a says that any NASCAR member charged with any violation of law, misdemeanor, and or felony shall notify NASCAR prior to the next scheduled event or within 72 hours of being so charged, whichever is earlier. And 4.4d, it says a lot in there, but one of the things that stands out is this part here. Member actions that could result in a fine and or indefinite suspension or membership revocation when being charged with or convicted of a significant criminal violations, examples, domestic violence, trafficking, assault, or having had 
determinations rendered by criminal or civil authorities that in NASCAR's judgment necessitate action, NASCAR will not prejudge or guilt or innocence in the criminal or civil legal system or the guilt or innocence of the member, but rather review each matter in its own context and circumstances with regards to its potential effects upon the sport. So, again, not to speculate too much, but what that essentially means is that there's been a, a crime violation of some sorts, and Mr. Hayden failed to uh, let NASCAR know about it. So, digging into it a little bit, I found out more about what happened, and the woman who has put out this statement of what happened to her has gave me permission to share her story and she's even added a few more details that she just wants everyone to be aware of again this is not me speculating it's not me saying that any story is accurate this is just her you know alleged allegations coming from her point of view so on march 21st shelby kistner posted onto facebook family and friends i feel the need to finally come out with what happened to me in september 2022 I have struggled with it for months, but it is extremely important that others are aware in hopes of protecting future victims. My ex-boyfriend, Michael Hayden, whom I was with for two years, punched, kicked, and strangled me after a great night out with his co-workers and friends of NASCAR. This man is extremely dangerous, and I have come to learn that I am not his only victim. I'm sick to my stomach, as no man or woman deserves what he did to me. In January 2023, he even pled guilty to beating me. And then, of course, she shared pictures on her Facebook page of images of bruising and signs that this was a bad relationship and she needed to get out of it. And it seems as though she's been able to get out of it, but there's even more details. And again, these are just allegations coming from her. This is not confirmed. I have no way to confirm that. This is just simply what she has shared with me to let everyone know. She said, Daniel, his lies and deception are much deeper than just his domestic violence. We were together for two years exclusive, yet I've now met with at least 25 other women that he dated during that time. He's stolen money, mentally, verbally, and physically abused many of them. We all had rings on our fingers due to his false dreams. There's even a Facebook support group where his victims are able to share their stories. I'm literally in tears because his actions have truly shaken my world. And I was able to find this said Facebook group she referred to. The title is Michael Hayden Survivor Group. It has 19 members in it, and it was created only about two months ago. So it seems as though there could be some truth to that. But again, these are just allegations right now. And again, this is not for me to speculate too much on, but it's what I've been presented by her. Moreover, on Michael Hayden, I did find out this was not his only time of uh, an indefinite suspension. He was indefinitely suspended a few years back, actually, when he got into a fight with a NASCAR team owner. So on May 23rd, 2018, Daniel McFadden posted an article from NBC Sports in which he stated that back then, the National Motorsports Appeals Panel announced Wednesday that it had amended a penalty assessed on May 9th, 2018 to former Xfinity Series crew member Michael L. Hayden. Hayden was suspended indefinitely by NASCAR after getting into an altercation of JP Motorsports owner Jerry Hathaway in the infield of Dover International Speedway on May 4th, 2018, resulting in Hathaway's jaw being broken. After hearing Hayden's testimony, the appeals panel rescinded the indefinite suspension, but it required him to still pay a $1,000 fine and must immediately enroll in NASCAR's reinstatement program and follow all the requirements issued. So this wasn't the only uh, time that we had heard Mr. Hayden's name in a NASCAR news world. Unfortunately, both times we have heard about him, it has not been for good moments. All this right now is just allegations. It's very convincing allegations, but it is just allegations. And I'm not here to speculate too much on it. Uh, it is very unfortunate. The stories that were told to me by Miss Shelby Kistner, and according to what she said, Mr. Hayden did plead guilty to the uh, abuse of her back uh, in January 2023. So... As of now, that is two cases this week where we have sadly seen members of the NASCAR world and definitely suspended for abuse allegations. I hate to see it like this. I hate, you know, anything resulting in harm to a woman or, or anyone because it's just not right. I, I grew up with it and it, it pains me to see it enter the NASCAR world. 
And uh, if you are struggling with anything like that, this goes for anyone watching. If you're struggling with abuse, find someone who can help you. There are support groups out there. There are people who are there to help you get what you need. There are people who are there to help you get out of those dangerous situations. I encourage you, man, woman, whoever you may be, find help if you need it. Um, again, that's all I have on this. It is unfortunate to see this happen in NASCAR world, but uh, it's it, it pains me to see it. And um, to all those who are, are are struggling with this, again, I pray for you guys. I pray you get you know help to get out of those dangerous situations. But until next time, that's all I have for today. Uh, you guys have a great day. Bye, guys. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this video from Day2B Talks. If you're new to my channel, make sure you leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so that you'll never miss another new video here on Day2B Talks. Until next time, I hope you have a great day. Bye guys.